Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss on a tool called Talent Pipeline Designer. Through this video, I will demonstrate you a quick demo of this particular tool. So, what is a Talent Pipeline Designer? Talent Pipeline Designer was formerly known as Talent Data Streams. It is used to build pipelines to collect and integrate both data in the batch and in streaming fashion. So, and this interface has is very intuitive in nature. The pipeline designer also has a uh, built-in component that allows you to extend its capabilities or your integration capabilities with your own Python code. And you can execute these pipelines in a remote engines and those engines can be hosted both on on-premises or in a virtual private cloud or in your public cloud environment. So without any further delay, let's get started with a quick demo of this particular tool wherein we'll be migrating the data from an S3 to Snowflake using Talent Pipeline Designer. So this is how Talent Pipeline Designer interface looks like. It's a web browser tool. Uh, so first thing you have to do is you have to create a connection to your source or your target. So in this particular demo, we'll be migrating data from S3. So we'll first create a connection to our source that is in S3. So to create a connection to your source, you can click on Add Connection. And here you specify your connection name, your engine, and your connection type. So we already have a configured uh, Amazon S3 as our connection, which is which is will be our as a source, and we'll define uh, access key and secret key there. And then we have to define our target as well. And in our case, we have defined the target as a snowflake. Here also you have to specify your JDBC URL to create a connection to the snowflake. So this is how a, a connection to a snowflake looks like. Uh, you have to specify your connection name, the JDBC URL, and you can click on check connection to test your connection. So we already have established the connection and now the second thing we have to do is we have to specify the data sets using those connections that we recently created. So we click on the data set and likewise we can click on add data set and here you have to use any existing connection. In this case, we are using S3 as a source, so we'll select that S3. And you have to select your bucket name and the object name. So once you have selected the object name, you can click on uh, Format Config, or the, uh, this way you can auto detect the configuration that it needs to establish or validate the data. So you can click once you have selected the uh, appropriate configuration you can click on validate to validate the data so in this particular case it has automatically detected that it's a CSV file and the delimiter and we can also view the sample uh, data set by clicking on view sample let me give this a name and now click on view sample this will take some time to generate a sample of 100 records so it takes about a minute to bring that sample data and this is how our data looks like once we have connected that particular data set and once you have selected this data set you can click on validate once you have validated it will give you a kind of a data quality picture of how your data looks like and it will just profile through an, your entire data set and will give you a percentage wise how much is how much that particular data is aligned to a certain format so once we have created that uh, data set connection uh, next is we will go to the pipelines to create our pipeline so to create the pipeline we will click on add pipeline and here we have to select our source first so in this particular case our source is S3 so we click on add source and then we select the data set that we need to so we select the S3 demo the one data set that we have recently created and we click on select data set now in this particular example let me show you how does the data uh, how, let me show you how does this data set looks like so uh, this data set is like uh, uh, Airbnb data of uh, New York City 
so what we so what we are going to do in this particular demo is we are going to get the average price of a neighborhood uh, for uh, using this price and we're going to use this column and neighborhood group so we're going to group by this neighborhood group and try to find the average price per neighborhood group so we have this as a data sample uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some transformation so first thing we need to do is we need to create uh, we need to convert this uh, price from string to an integer so that we can calculate the average price so for that we click on add processor and here we'll select uh, type converter so in the type converter I'm going to convert uh, first select the field that I need in this case it is price and I'm going to convert the output type as integer and click on save I can also convert it to an float if required but for now I will keep it as a integer and next is now we need to do an aggregation so we'll select uh, the aggregator transformation so this is the aggregate processor that we have to select and here we select the field path So in the aggregator, I will specify uh, the group by column. So in this case, it is neighborhood group. And then since we have to calculate the average price, so we'll select uh, first the field path on price. And then the operation we have to select is average. So once you have that selected, just click on save. and now we need to add our destination so in this particular case our destination is snowflake so before I select the data set here I firstly need to create a data set uh, for the snowflake so I will do one thing I will go back and go to the data set and in the data set I will just click on add data set and specify a name of the data set so this data set is refers to the table that I'm going to create in uh, snowflake for storing the average price per neighborhood group so click so click a associated uh, connection in this case it is snowflake type as table So I have to give you a table name. And click on validate or save. So once we have created the data set, we'll use this data set in our pipeline. So that's it our pipeline is ready now we'll run this pipeline uh, to load this data from s3 to the snowflake database so to run this pipeline i will click on run button so the pipeline has started execution and it will take almost a minute or so to load this data so one thing i forgot to mention here like if your output table does not exist you can select the create table if not exist and you can also specify the column length I have specified as 200 and click on save now I'm running this job again so after a minute or so the job has completed successfully and we can see the logs as well by clicking on view logs option and there is no error and job has completed successfully so now we'll go to the snowflake to check the particular table where we have loaded the average price per neighborhood 
so this is the snowflake database that I was referring to so I will click on refresh button to create to see the table that has been recently created so this is the table that I am referring to so I will do select star on this table so as you can see for all the neighborhood groups it has listed down the average price so the average price that I was looking for Brooklyn is the uh, 124.38 cents so this was a quick demo on how we can use uh, this uh, pipeline designer to migrate data from S3 there's another feature as well in regards to the data quality so let's just say if you want to see how is the quality of our data that we are using we can go back to the data sets and click on the data set for which you want to see the quality so in my case I want to see the quality on this one so you have a various uh, parameters that shows you the quality of not only the overall data set but also for individual columns so in this case for host ID as you can see most of them is like uh, green as you can see 85 percent we have the valid rows but we do have like 15 percent of the records where we have some issue with the data so likewise there are some issues with the latitude and longitude and other columns as well uh, so these are like inconsistency for example in the latitude you have a column called uh, uh, varchar data which is not following with the rest of the format of the data so it's lorry and in certain cases we have the lengths of the decimal places it's quite different from the rest of the records so that's why we have this data quality issue but then overall we have like 93 percent uh, data which is very good uh, in a good format so we can certainly use that so this was a quick demo on using the pipeline designer uh, thanks for watching this video